Okay. Still we serve a tattoo waiting God. Just somebody say God got swag. God has swag. Amen. So tattoos on God's hand. Yeah, we can break this open. I want you to see this. Um, since I've been studying another kind of way, you know, like, uh, seeing things that, in a way that I've never seen it, uh, and then of course I've been focused on making it, focused on making it as relevant as can, so it can be applicable. Of the things that you can relate to even in today's generation, amen. Today's time. So let's deal with that. Uh, God wearing tattoos, tattoos on the hand of God. Let's go to a scripture, and I want you to see it, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how we got there. Um, this is Isaiah chapter forty-nine. Sure. See how it reads. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Sure that they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed. New King James, Old King James, regular says, engraved. Modern translation says, tattooed. You on the palms of my hands. Your walls, meaning your protection, that's what walls, the walls of Jerusalem, protecting. Your walls, your protection are continually before me. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. That word inscribed, and this came from a book that a friend of mine, a great friend of mine, sent me. It's from a Hebrew, Jewish, uh, Hebrew scholar, rabbi, who um, goes back through the Torah and the Old Testament and um, based on Hebrew culture and language are uh, transcribing the, the various sections of the Old Testament with the correct wording according to Hebrew knowledge and so forth and so he was the one that I, that actually did I, I saw this and he opened it up uh, for me and I'm thankful for that because I knew that in, in King James there were some mistranslations there um, and so we're working now to correct that that word inscribed and it's got the, the English translation uh, and then it's got the Hebrew pronunciation. I'm not going to worry about all of that because that's not the point. But I put up that in case if you want to look it up and click on it. But it means, and these are just some words, to engrave, I'm going to show you that in a minute, to set or to cut into, you know, like when, when uh, some of the sororities are pledging the guys and they make certain marks and things on their arms and stuff that they have to cut into and then engrave. To mark, carve what they do, seal, which we get a New Testament word, tattoo. It also means like a decree, a law decree, which kings and so forth can make. Come on. But don't you look at that? To engrave into my hands. I have engraved you into my hands. I have inscribed you into my hands. I have seal you. And you know what a seal is because we, we, we uh, authenticize something that's, you know, you make it authentic and it makes an imprint into the paper so we understand exactly what God is saying. I have sealed or tattooed you in my hands. 
I have engraved, so you see it now, carved, tattooed, etc. So my, into my hands. Your walls are continually before me. I just want you to get a good, good take on, on that right there. In Isaiah 44, I brought this up because this helps to uh, also further uh, validate the point. One will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Another will write with his hand. I underline that because that's what the regular King James says. The word with is in it's not in the original writing because they have the kind of metallic writing to let you know when this is an insertion. And so in both of them, that's written in the cursive, which means that it was inserted into there to make it make sense. So it has, I will write with, another will write with his hand. The Lord's and name himself by the name of Israel. That's the way it reads. Another will write with his hand, the Lord, I mean I am the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. Here's what the scholar said who translate the Torah based upon what the wording is in original and not rearrange to say he will write with his hand because it's not talking about writing. It's talking about how you identify yourself. One will say, I am the Lord's. He's identifying himself. Another will say, I'm called by the name of Jacob. So it's doing with how you identify yourself. It's not dealing with writing anything. So they said, and another will write with his hand, I am the Lord. Here's what the scholar said it reads. Taken from the Hebrew, from, uh, the, the, the translation from one of the rabbis. One will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. And another, upon whose hand shall be written the Lord's Israel. It didn't say he will write with his hand. It says, upon his hand shall be written. Because we're talking about identity. So one will say, I belong to God. Another one will say, I am of Jacob. And still another one will say nothing, but will extend his hand, and upon his hands will be written, the Lord's Israel. Why is that important? The Lord's Israel. Because Israel, which is the name that God changed from Jacob, is in really two words. E-L, which means God. And saw S A R, which means prince. So when God changed Jacob's name, He changed him to Israel, meaning the prince or prince of God. And that's who Israel. Why He called him my son. He refers to Israel all the time as my son, prince of God. So while one will say I'm the Lord, and another will say I'm of Jacob, the third one will stretch forth his hand, and upon his hand will written will be written the Lord's prince. Hallelujah. And that's who you are. In Zechariah, it says that when, 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 when Zechariah's garments was changed, which represent the filth of the flesh, upon all of that, when he changed, when God changed his garment in, in the book of Zechariah, the high priest, at the end, he said, bring a fair mind tree, which we know is a partial crown that, that sits upon the head like what kings or prince wear, and, and there's a little opening. So, and upon that opening, it has holiness unto the Lord. So this is your crown and glory, which means that when anybody look at you, before you say anything, it has holiness unto the Lord written upon your crown. God saying, upon the hand of that person shall be written. In other words, holiness unto the Lord, meaning this property is holy. Holy. I am God's prince. That's how you identify me. You don't have to say nothing. Just stretch out your hands. Thank you, Lord. So next time you're confronted with a battle, 
from the enemy before you open your mouth to say anything lift up your hands because there's an inscription written that says holiness unto the Lord this is God's property I am the prince of God that's why I have authority in the earth room. lift your hand and tell the Lord thank you that makes sense to you now but in the, in the writing they said they were right with their hands but the scholar said that's not the way it is. And we know that right with is, is in metallic, the with. So it's not in there. It was inserted, and that's all through, through the Bible. The, that's why they had to put it in the metallic, because they let you know that this was inserted. What happened to if you add to and take away? Come on. Come on. Yet yeah, we have a word that's been constantly added to and stuff rearranged to make sense. Well, sometimes serving God don't make sense. Come on. Tell the Lord thank you. When I read that, I'm like, wow. This makes more sense. Mm -hmm. But to those, it said, they shall write with their hand, I belong to God. But in the regular, it's, it doesn't say with, it just said, this, upon whose hands shall be written the Lord's Israel. Israel meaning Prince of God. So when you lift your hands in the sanctuary, there's inscriptions upon there saying, I belong to God. I belong to you. I am your prince in the earth realm. Before you even say anything, when you just do this, And, and, and the thing about that is that there's a, almost a kind of, I'm, I'm going to use this word, flamboyant arrogance because you, when you know who you are, the air is so that when I walk into God's presence, I don't have to say to you who I am. Everything about me says Prince of God. And that's what it's, that's what it's saying. Let's go with another scripture that's what I always show. So we're talking about here's Deuteronomy chapter 6. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. This is 4 through 9. I didn't put all of it up there. I just kind of skimmed through it. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, with all of your strength. And these words which I command you this day shall not depart from your heart. You shall teach them to your children and so forth and so on. Here it is. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. So when God spoke that in Isaiah that he's doing it, he had already told them to do it. So they understood. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. You shall bind them, inscribe this upon your hands, engrave it in your flesh. As a sign on your hand, and the, the something shall be as front. They shall be frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them upon your doorposts and so forth and so on. See what? Okay, bind them, inscribe them upon your hands. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You know what that is. In, in India, that's a culture that they practice. The red dot in here, African culture, they got the same thing. You see where all of this stuff is? So, so if you have knowledge of that, you understand the language of, of what's going on. In other words, put it on your, bind it on your hands. Put it here between the front of your eyes. 
as a mark of distinction and identity. It goes back to the Fairmont tree, Zachariah. So same thing here, they've been told. Even today, there's something what is called the ensigns of Jerusalem, which are marks on the forehand. So anybody, you know, part of Israel, whatever now, the ensign, meaning that they, when they go to uh, Israel, or, or what they, they, they have a stamp now that they do it. They can paint it or stamp it. And what it has is, is, is really uh, a lion, which represents the line of the tribe of Judah, you know, through the line of David, which they honor in the messianic line so forth. So that in, in that inscription is a line. Um, there's a wall around it which represents protection. And in between the line and the wall, there are olive branches, which is God's covenant of peace. Wow. That's what the scripture shows today. Line, you know what that represents. The olive branch, which is the covenant of peace, and the wall around it, the line around it, which represents the wall, which is, which is eternal protection. And the, the, the olive branch actually is a, is a peace treaty, treaty between God and you that shall never be broken. So when you lift your hands, and say for your, in your mind that that's the inscription. Thank you, Lord God. I am the Israel of God. I have a covenant of peace which you signed that you can never be, never be broken. And I am divinely protected by your protection. Hallelujah. That's the inside of you. You can look it up, click on it, write it, and go home and give you, you'll see. They practice it even to this day, which is taken from this whole inscription thing. Now, let's pause my go on that. So, really, what this is talking about is body tattooing these things. And body tattooing and piercing is an African custom, culture, and tradition dating back thousands of years. So what it also, it also shows you, and, and, and I want you to stay with me here, is that God is not against using the cultural traditions and practices of that time and day and all to make his case and to make his point. And that's what he's doing. When they, were, when, when, when they made, uh, Aaron made the golden calf, one of the things he said is take the earrings out of your ears and your nose. Well, we know. That's African culture. And they brought all of that from their bodies and so forth. And of course they put it in and they made the, the golden calf. And there are other places where they talk about, you know, earrings and ears and nose and so forth and so on. Uh, Paul in the New Testament talks about the, the plaiting and braiding of hair with, and decorative with all kind of ornaments in the hair. That's Africa. Now, let me say this right here and y'all have to take this at first value. Uh, I understand he was writing from a Hebrew perspective, but I think that, that right there, some of the things he said were, was not divinely inspired. He was just writing in some things of, 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 were, for, were, were custom writings, cultural writings, and so it wasn't Israel's culture. But here's my problem too. Um, I don't think demonizing culture does not glorify God. I'm going to say that again. Demonizing somebody's culture does not glorify God. It just wasn't the Jewish culture. But you can't say that because this culture bled, bled, bladed, uh, braided their hair and wore, you know, big ornaments, that all of a sudden that's heathenistic. Come on. Come on. That, that's your racism right there. Or yeah. uh, uh, I suffer not a woman to speak in the church, let her ask her husband when she go home. That's sexism. That was okay for that culture. But you can't make that God. And this is why Christians, we have problems today because we demonize people's culture and practice and say this is heathenness. But if it's your custom and your culture, you're considered rebellious if you don't follow and practice the culture. It's just that he didn't want them to practice and adopt their culture. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
but the scripture constantly shows us that they did. And now we have God even using cultural identity and telling them to do likewise in terms of this right here. And then God says, I'm going to tattoo my hands, saying that you are my prince. Out of leaves mean that I have a covenant of peace treaty between you and me that's forever. Surrounded by protection, meaning that I will be your protection. And I'm going to put it up on my hand. And this is what one of the guys said, and I think that he said, so God put it as a reminder to himself that when you get so crazy and I raise my hand to strike you down when I see you in my hand, hallelujah, my covenant of peace saying I cannot destroy you. When you act a fool, and I lift my hand in judgment, upon my own hands shall be written, this is the Lord's Prince. I have a covenant of peace that I made with them. I shall never destroy them. That's you. Thank you, Lord God. That's why we do a whole bunch of stuff. And we even say, I shouldn't have this, and I shouldn't be here. And I don't say that kind of stuff. I'm like, you know, because it could be worse. Thank you, Lord God. That makes sense to you? So God used what was custom. Now, it is very likely the reason why he used this. Paul may have written, written to demonize it in, in his way, but that's because these Jews were black folk Africans anyway. So he just, this, this is the practice. Regardless of where, what case you want to argue from, that's not my point today. Let me show you the body tattoo. That's constantly there. That. That's, that's all, all the various. That's just one example. There's many pictures, but just one example I want to show you. You see that emblem in her forehead? Yeah. Your rings are different. That's what God is talking about. Let me, let, me, let me go home a little bit more. I didn't put two. That's engraved, tattooed. Yeah. Various tribes after have different signs that represent certain things. Boys, when they grow up, will receive certain things for their manhood, and when they accomplish certain things, tattoo, they represent certain things. So God is speaking in the language that they understood. Yeah. And yet God says, I'm going to do this to my hand. Not just this point. This is just an example. I'll just show you. There are many more. I just pull just a few so you can see some that really, really nice. And this is all over. You see, you meet some of the I met quite a few of them that come and they have a, like this, I've met uh, some from Africa who, you know, I, I used to try because that, all of that represents something. That's body tattooing. That's the culture. They're not healed because they fracture the culture, a certain culture. To be honest with you, in, back in the, the quote unquote founding fathers who set the country. They came from England with the traditions of England. And you see a lot of the pictures of the men sitting in, you know, in their black robes on, they put on white wigs with the curl. Mm -hmm. That's what, that was the practice. Why was that okay? <laughs> you got men, men wearing wigs. That, that, that came from England and you know, and you go, go just click on the file and fall, all of them still there with black robe and white weed with the little curl. Weave. Because that was the, at that time the practice. Then, then in, in, in Jewish history, the, the, the women covered their head. So Paul wrote, it's a shame for a woman to have her head uncovered because that was their custom. 
So no, why he would write against braiding of the hair? Because the head wasn't covered, which was Jewish custom at that time. Women, you know, don't cut your hair. It's a shame for men to have long hair, even though, you know, because women are supposed to have long hair, don't cut your hair. Men, you have, you, you got to keep your hair cut. That's what Paul wrote down. You, keep, you cut your hair down. Shame for you to have your head uncovered. Don't cut your hair. That's what Paul wrote down. And, and men, you know, you, you, you can't have long hair. Well, <laughs> this Jesus y'all gave us don't look like he got a haircut. <laughs> now, if we go back to the black Jesus, he probably was dreading down. He, he wore dreads. <laughs> but y'all, you say don't cut your hair, but then you, 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 we, we, we got a false. Boy, please don't take this out of context. I'm going to just set the record straight here. Yeah, y'all. Matter of fact, y'all watching my screen, you don't necessarily have to never go, come here. <laughs> but we know that Jesus y'all gave us is not him. You in the middle of a desert. The middle of a desert. And you got blue hairs and long, blonde, flowing hair? In the middle of the desert? You can put a white person in the sun. They'll show you the white people that work in the sun start to darken. You can't live in the sun and not your skin not get burnt or brown or whatever, you know. Darken. So you mean you walked in the desert all those years and you ain't never got a tan? Come on, see, see, see. And then you went to Egypt, and, and where all of the black folk, because that word actually is another word, Kemet, it actually means black. And Egypt also means black, which is out of another language. We get Egypt is really Kemet. You know, darker, darker race, black race, however you want to put it. And so you went in there, and you in, embraced yourself with all of them, didn't stand out. And so you want all these black folk and a white guy walking with long blonde blended hair, blonde hair, even as a child walking in. No. No. But that's what they want you to believe because they're perpetuating is a racism that whites are superior. So they sell you that same thing. Now I know this Palm Sunday and I ain't mean to go up that far. That that's why I had to make the case now. Oh, we're getting ready to, you know, celebrate the resurrection. So I want you to have a right image in your mind. <laughs> anyway, this is a good example of body tattooing. Now, you know, you have it in the ink too, and then you have all that says the same thing. And so God used the same cultural practice he applied it to himself to say I have engraved you into my hands. I have tattooed, tattooed you into my hands. But that's what he was talking about. And notice, that only is with black folk. You don't see no white folk doing that because that's, that's African. Now you got white folks not trying to go there and move and do all of that, but y'all y'all Johnny come lately. You, know. <laughs> you got the white women running over there marrying the Sahara uh, Maasai boys and men, everything else and so forth, so on, and then leaving the city, going that city, repulsing all of that. Everybody want to be black. <laughs> And the models they inject in their lips now, everybody. That's up that y'all demonized a hundred years. Every model now got lipstick on way up with injected lips and everything. Everybody want to be black. They don't want the consequences. They want the privilege of the white, but you want to look like the beauty of the blacks, but they sold you. But you're not attractive. 
And yet, God used this as a way of not just a figure of speech, but as a practice that he would do to himself. I will engrave, seal, stamp, tattoo you in my hands so that you are ever before me. And when I raise my hand to strike, I shall be reminded of a covenant of peace that I've made with you, a peace treaty that I will never utterly destroy you. That's why even when God struck Israel, there was always a remnant that he left because he had committed himself eternally to never utterly destroy. You are the Israel of God. When you, when, when you are raised back up, it ain't because you've been so righteous or so wrong. It's because God has a covenant of peace that he's made between you and himself that he can never utterly destroy you. So if, I don't care what you're going through. If you would just, just, just even stand in the storm, at some point, God will be reminded that I'm in a peace treaty with them and I can never utterly destroy them. That I have to at some point raise them back up because I've sworn by myself and there's none greater. And I've made a peace treaty with myself. And they're inscribed, tattooed on my hand. So when you imagine when you're praising God and you just lift your, 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 your head up and your own eyes see yourself looking at yourself tattooed in the hand of God and that he's eternally committed to protect you and to keep be at peace or to keep peace with you, that you are the Lord's Israel, Prince of God, and that's who you are. And, and, and let me say this right. And the tattoo is a sign of your princehood. You have it and God has it. We move on. Here's the song of Solomon. and He's singing about his beloved Shulamite, but look what he makes reference to. Look, he said, now, now Solomon understands what the, the language that was been, been written. So Solomon says, we understand the tattoo on the hand of God, the tattoos concerning, you know, the, uh, the emblem of, of the Lord's Israel. He says, set me as a seal, which is one of the definitions, upon your heart. Good God Almighty here. What, what he's actually, what Solomon is indicating, I know you got me tattooed on your hand. Tattoo me on your heart. My God Almighty. 